Given that averaging is used to reduce the noise in the ERP waveform, and it's often difficult to get enough trials to produce an acceptable signal-to-noise ratio, it's important to ask where the noise comes from. There are three main noise sources. First, the EEG contains a ton of genuine brain activity that just isn't time-locked to the stimulus. For example, you can see alpha band oscillations here during the pre-stimulus interval. Because they're present before the stimulus appears, they're clearly not triggered by the stimulus, so they add uncontrolled variability to our average ERPs. Biological artifacts that are generated outside the brain are the second major source of noise in EEG recordings. For example, eye blinks and eye movements create large voltages called the electrooculogram. These voltages conduct to our scalp electrodes, often creating artifacts of over 100 microvolts. The muscles on the head and neck also create high-frequency voltages called the electromyogram that can contaminate the EEG. And the skin itself is an electric organ that produces slow voltage changes called skin potentials. The third source of noise in EEG recordings is induced electrical activity from the recording environment. When a current flows through a conductor, it's accompanied by a magnetic field. If that magnetic field then passes through another conductor, it induces the flow of electric current in that second conductor. As a result, AC electrical current flowing back and forth through a light bulb at 60 Hz will create a 60 Hz magnetic field oscillation, which then induces a 60 Hz voltage oscillation in our EEG electrodes. Or it may be 50 Hz, depending on what country you're in. Now let's ask a fundamental question. What do we actually mean by noise? Generally, noise just means any source of uncontrolled variability in the recording. When this variability comes from light bulbs or the skin, it's pretty straightforward to see what we mean by noise. But what about these alpha oscillations? They reflect real brain activity, and they can be used to study things like attention and mind wandering. So aren't these oscillations a signal rather than a source of noise? Well, one researcher's signal can be another researcher's noise. The key is whether it creates uncontrolled variability in the signal of interest. If we're trying to study the processing of the stimulus, we typically have no control over the alpha band oscillations, and they create uncontrolled variability in the stimulus-locked ERP waveform. That's noise. There's also trial-by-trial -trial variability in the actual neural response to the stimulus. If we don't experimentally control this variability, that is considered noise. Keep in mind that averaging is a pretty simplistic way of dealing with noise. ERP researchers also use a variety of more sophisticated ways of dealing with things like alpha band oscillations and trial-by-trial -trial variations in ERP responses. But these methods have their limitations as well, so averaging is still the most common way of dealing with noise.